Welcome back to another episode of Bear Trap on the Boom Bus Channel. I'm your host, Terry, and today, how about them bears? All right, hopefully we won't be too long. I promise this time. I mean, we get the 19-point win in London. We take over the London Jacksonville Jaguars, and we win. Uh, hopefully you are in the community again you don't have to be a subscriber but if you subscribe to the channel you get in the community you see kind of some of my live game thoughts but uh, we are gonna keep this short and sweet like taking this back to the offseason as I said like honestly uh, we're four and two I think we should be six and oh um, Houston the only one that might be questionable, but with the way the defense was able to perform and not no disrespect. Trust me, I understand the conversations. This is no disrespect to CJ Shroud, who I'm a big fan of, but there's not a lot of conversation on kind of how he struggled against some of these defenses. And I think I well, we that was like the second week. So I wouldn't say I think, but for sure, we were the first ones to be like, okay, as much as he can rip us with Nico Collins and stuff, there's certain things we can do for this offense in general where they don't have a run game and everything. And so we should have won that, or we, at least we were in a chance to win it without shooting ourselves in the foot. And that's just kind of been the story of our team this year. And so um, for us to come out again, to London, kind of very different schedule and all those different things to lock in, do what we had to do, play like how we thought, even without Brisker and um, Stevenson, where it was a question, could we come out and really, because I've said before, like I'd much rather have four defensive backs that are on the same page and know what their job is versus one superstar quote-unquote lockdown corner and so it was a question with a depleted secondary what would we be able to do especially with Trevor Lawrence the number one pick but overall man look it came down to the tackles and um, as I've said many times before I'm not going to sit here and be sports media I'm not going to give you a narrative I don't know Like, first drive, I definitely saw it. And to give behind the scenes, because this is a small community, Better Bears fans, like, I got an ankle injury I'm dealing with, um, you know, advising and working with my rugby team. And so uh, I was kind of in and out doing different things. But the first drive, for sure, I saw where the tackles were a little bit of an issue. And I think after that even with the second drive not being great i think after that we saw a lot more adjustments with the quick game but i don't know for sure i I really want to get to the film and see like 100 percent clarity what happened um because i don't want to say we you know it was waldron i don't want to say it was the line playing better we got to see on the film so but either way we did adjust and we did play better with that um and the run game was okay uh definitely some explosives that happened and i i'm i'm curious to look at that as well but you get the jags one and four just kind of a shamble of a team uh we're overseas it's a whole different thing and and still i think you see caleb making better decisions Still some decisions that you might question or not. I won't even say decisions, but at least like ball placement. And so I I definitely wouldn't say he's boom or bust right now, but he's definitely sporadic. We'll say that because it could be very high level. It could be very low level. And we'll kind of. Uh, go to the film and look at it but the defense continues to shine I mean lack of pass rush is a thing and and you can see it two solid tackles here lack of pass rush is a thing 
But in terms of the overall integrity of the defense, even without Brisker, even without Stevenson, we play really well. And even, you know, though they were able to get yards, we use our aggressiveness to attack the ball, try to get turnovers. We all know that's kind of of a bear's thing. So we're operating at that level. We've been operating at that level, even with injuries today. And so not an issue there at all. But I I just think overall, coming into this season, I looked at the schedule and I told you, like, first of all, so many people with these discussions about the Bears and I don't care if you follow every single thing, if you never even really looked into the Bears, it's not hard to look at one simple thing. We won seven games last year, seven games last year. And yes, it's an overhaul, but everybody looked at it as an upgrade. So I'm like, seven games, why do you not think we can win 10? In seven games, mind you, where we could have had at least nine with a couple decisions here and there. So I just look at the team for the most part, and I'm like, why would you think we can't win 10 games? Not only because of the, the talent on the roster, but because of the, the schedule. And so... Uh, I don't remember who's up next, but I know we'll end up playing the commanders and stuff like that. But so far, I've seen progression and I want to go to the film to kind of, you know, give the correct kudos. But we've seen progression from the offense. We've seen progression from Caleb Williams, the defense. Um, Honestly, taking a bit of a step back from last year, but not too much. Uh, I think we were better against the run last year, but still overall, just a unit that really knows what it's doing. And so you get up against a team like the Jags, who really shot themselves in the foot most of the game instead of us. And we were able to capitalize on a lot of things, whether it was the defensive turnovers um, or if it was the defensive being able to stop Jacksonville and get us the ball back but I think that's the thing like we're going to look at big plays we're going to look at touchdowns we're going to talk about Caleb but the biggest thing was the defense I think they held so solid and they were able to give us the ball back and that was the difference in the game um is and I mentioned earlier in terms of and I've said this several times like with Eber Flues that there was a conversation I'm not making this up There was a loud conversation everywhere um, about Eberflus not making it through the season. And so much to the point, some people were just very blatant, like, yeah, we all know he's a lame duck coach. So I think without, I ain't even gonna get into all that. People overuse things. And so if you sitting here saying he's a lame duck coach, and then you just completely turn your tune six weeks into the season. I don't really, I don't jive with that because for me, uh, I'm sorry, they got the Bears next four games up. So yeah, we we got the Commanders, the Cardinals, the Patriots. Um, Commanders, obviously, Jaden Daniels versus Caleb. That's going to be a discussion. Commanders defense hasn't been great. We'll see what they do against the Ravens today. Patriots are in shambles and and the Cardinals defense isn't great either. So again, to to think we couldn't win 10 games is crazy. And I know a lot of people don't, you know, they don't jump out on a ledge. They don't they don't do that. So they're not going to say what is what. But I said I called my shot from the offseason. 10 games is the floor. And I I still believe 1000% we can get there. But Overall, again, I uh, and I forgot what, what I was saying, but I, I just feel like some people really underestimated what we did last year, what Eberflus did last year. And so coming into this year, you know, rookie quarterback, a bit of a boomer bust quality to Caleb Williams, offensive line questions, whatever. 
people came into this not giving us the respect because the, a lot of that isn't new and so if we were in my mind able to get seven wins last year with a potential of two to three more wins why wouldn't we get 10 wins with a better roster in a great schedule this year so uh this isn't johnny come lately that's what i always kind of figure and then back to Eberflus, like again that conversation was out there people call him a lame duck coach people saying that he was positioned to be fired people saying oh you lose the first three games he's gonna be fired now look the owners i wouldn't say unpredictable but definitely impatient and the jets showed that so it's not out of the realm that he maybe he would have been fired if we went zero and three but i just think talent wise and what we did the the conversation was silly especially given the fact that their first year polls tanked the team on purpose and i'm sure Eberflus knew that so anyway we're we're past all that we're reaping the benefits of uh, everything we kind of set up and it's going well but i'll have a ton more to say once we get to film but good win today you know cheerio mate all that good stuff and it's just it's an exciting time i i don't know how you look the jags terrible pass defense best corner out but pretty good front seven and again that's why i want to go to the film because uh protection got better throughout the game and from what i saw i think it was better quicker passing game but i can't wait to go to film get people their credit but I understand those that might say, yeah, it's the Jacks. So there's that. The Panthers, all that. I acknowledge that. I know a lot of people get pissed when you acknowledge it. But I acknowledge all that. That's true. Um, but the tackles had a test. And we'll get to the film to see how they did. But going forward, you know, no matter who he played, the confidence is key. The confidence has built up and I, I, you know, I'm excited to see what we got next. That's all I'll say. So that's it for me. Go down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Share it around. Get the conversation started. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And remember, stay up and bear down.